لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربه وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن دعا بدعوته الى يوم الدين I received a question by WhatsApp. Uh, the question was about the Qasr Salah. And the question was that a person had not, was in trouble, and decided to complete the song, not to shorten the thing. And the person was told that he has to repeat the salah. He has to repeat the salah instead of making four, he must make he must make two, he must make two, he can't make four. And the question was, is that so is it not so? Of course to answer the question, I think it's important to understand the whole concept and the rules and regulations that govern Qasr Salah Jam Salah. Two issues here, there is the shortening of the prayer and there is also the joining of the prayer. And I can guarantee you that I'm sure you've heard this lecture probably a hundred times. I can guarantee you that you guys will need to learn something new. That's always the case. Um, first of all, The reduction of the Salah from 4 to 2 is what is called in the Sharia a Rusa. The laws of the Sharia are divided into two categories. One is called a Rusa, meaning a, an ease or a facilitation, and the other is called an Azima, so rules are either fall in the category of azima, which means strict law. Like for example, an azima would be to fast 29 or 30 days in the month of Ramadan. That's a strict law. To make five times a lot every day is a strict law. To make four rakahs for the is a strict law. To give two and a half percent zakah is a strict law. To go for eyes, one people have to is a strict law. These are called azima. An azima is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. Every legislated legislation from the Sharia, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called an azim. Strict law. It's called strict law. Then there is the rufsa. And any deviation from that law, which has also been sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is called a rufsa. For example, so we have to make four rakas for that is the azima, that is the strict law. But the rufsa, the facilitation of that is that when you travel, you can make two rakas. Same with fasting, if that's a problem. When you travel, you can decide whether you want to fast or not. Of course, for zakat, there's no rufsa. You have to pay it to one half percent if you're able to pay it to one half percent. But there are many others. For example, if you can't take wudu, wudu is azima, strict law. If you can't take wudu, you know what to do. You take pay it. So tonight in Java we're going to discuss the whole question of Qasr, where does it come from? Where does it, what are the ahadith and the ayat of the Qur'an which revolve around Qasr Salah? First of all, Allah Subh'ana talks about Qasr Salah in the Qur'an. Surah al Nisa, verse 101, Allah Subh'ana says, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And when you travel through the earth, there is, then there is no blame on you. And taqsuru min as salah. That you, Allah doesn't say, and taqsuru salah. Allah doesn't say that you reduce the salah. Allah says that you reduce min as salah, of the salah. Okay, in other words, the Quran is very strict, very definite, it says, not all the salah can be reduced. The salah of Maghrib and the salah of Fajr cannot be reduced. Allah subhanahu wa said, Taqsuru as salah, when you're going to reduce the salah, you mean that? You would have had to make one rakah for, for Fajr, 
And how many for one day? One night. And the deal is not ridiculous. And the language of Arabic is a very different language. I mean, it doesn't, you know, what it says, it says. You can't misinterpret the Quran. No misinterpretation. So when Allah subhanahu wa says you can reduce the salah, it means that you can make two for dhul, two for asr, two for isha. And in times of fear, if you are very if you are fearful, if you're in a situation of fear, then all the rakas can be made. Salat al khauf, salat of fear. How many salat? How many rakat salat of fear? Yeah, I told you in the letter. What do you want to do with the other one? Let's go by himself. Let's go by himself. Let's go by himself. That's why there's so few people. They really ask me. So how many are you talking about when you're in a situation of fear or war? You feel something's going to kill you. You feel something's going to kill you. Something's behind you with a knife is chasing you. It's a lot of time of salah is there. You set of fear. Or the enemy, you're going to meet the enemy in battle. The enemy is around you in battle. But you, you know, you cannot not make salah. You know, salah is foul. doesn't matter whether the enemy is chasing you, you're chasing the enemy. Or in a set of fear. And we learn in those times that we learn in sense of fear sometimes. You tell them we fear. You never know, you know, make salah, or make ruku, or so you tell going to grab my money or take my car. You know, or hurt me or even me. For the song for Raqqa, in times of fear and war, you make one Raqqa. It doesn't matter if it's Fajr or Dhur or Asr or Mother of One Raqqa. And in times of war and fear, there's no Ruku and no Sujood. So it doesn't make sense. That you fear and you're going to make Ruku and Sujood. If you make Ruku, somebody's going to chop your head off. If you make Sujood, well, you can't see anybody around. So you make salah, you can make salah in terms of war and fear on your camel or on your riding horse or on your mule. And of course, in terms of battle, also the Sahab used to wear the armor. It's difficult to make a request to do the armor. That's the other reason. The Sahaba used to stand and for Rukun used to do that and for Sujood, like we do, when we said salah. You ask who is open in front of you. But the salah itself, the intention of salah, you can't say, well, you know, I'm facing the enemy, you know, I'm going to you know, postpone my salah and kill a couple of these people. Postpone. No. The time the salah comes, you know, the Sahaba and Salaam is to pray. One self, the, the first self prays and the second self doesn't pray. And then the second self prays and then the third self stands with this one. That's how they pray. But the prayer is subhanAllah was never postponed for any reason. So now you want to do when you go to jihad. SubhanAllah. Allah SWT is the Lord who will make jihad, inshaAllah. Or make intention to make jihad. That's very important. Some of the hadith, Imam Bukhari reports on Anas ibn Malik, خرجنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من المدينة إلى مكة فكان يصلي ركعتين ركعتين حتى رجعنا إلى المدينة. أنا زي ما قلت سيد، we used to go away from Medina with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to مكة to go to مكة and we used to make two ركعات until we return to Medina. and we will talk about the time involved. Bukhari also reports from Abdullah بن عمر. Very important hadith. It teaches us a lot. This hadith teaches us a lot. Listen to this hadith. I'm going to ask you questions about the hadith. If you can't answer, I'm going to put you in the naughty corner. <laughs> Why I'm saying this? Because I want to remember, I want to, make, I want to say things and make you laugh and make a joke so that you can remember. Very important that you remember uh, these things. The very important matters that you must remember. أخرج البخاري من البخاري ريبوز من عبد الله بن عمر 
Abdullah bin Umar says, Sallaytu ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bimuna raka'atin. He says, when we went for Hajj, we used to make two raka'ats in Mina, as you know, we reduce the Salah in Mina and we go to part of Jamalah. Wa Abi Bakr ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Sayyidina Umar says, we used to make we went for Hajj with the Nabi, we used to make two rakahs. Eh? In the time of Abu Bakr, we made two rakahs in Mina. At the time of Umar ibn Khattab, when he went for Hajj with the Muslims, he made two rakahs in Mina. Why did they all make two rakahs? My first question, why did they all make two? At your first answer. They made two because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made two. Now, Now comes the question. Abdul ibn Umar says, when it came to the time of Sayyidina Uthman, at the beginning of his imara, at the beginning of his reign, of his rule, Umar reduced the salah to two, and later on he completed the salah and made four. So I repeat the hadith. Abdul ibn Umar of the Ruaya says, when we went for Hajj with the Prophet, we made two at dinner. When we went for Hajj with Abu Bakr, we made two at dinner. When we went with Umar in the Khattab, with the Atra'anhu, we made two. When we went with Uthman in the first few years of Abu Uthman's reign, we made two. And later in the latter part of the reign of Man completed the salah and made four rakat. What do you think? Why is it Osman in there? That's why you don't know. No, you didn't know? Really, really, really? MashaAllah, give you a lot of money. Shaykh? Yes. How are you? Are you Osman? Just the concept of the completed? Four, made four rakat. Instead of making two, we made four. Made four. Yes. Two and then two again. No, 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 no. You make four rakas for the world, four rakas for us, four rakas for Aisha. Because remember, you spend, you spend at least two days in Mina. You make four for the world, four for us. And combine it, which means you made. Four and four. He didn't go back. He made four and four and three and four and two. He didn't pass up. He didn't make pass up. No jump. He didn't jump. He didn't make pass up. No, no, no. Our Osman in the latter part of his room, he made it as one would normally make it if you're not on the track. He disregarded the roofs of the track. Similarly, we know that the rule of law is, we give two other examples, that the law says, Asaliku wa saliqatu, faqta'u aidiyakum. Law says in the Quran, the male and female thief, when they steal, must cut off their hand. That's the rule. That's the law. The law says that if a man is found guilty in a Muslim court of law for having stolen anything, then that person is going to come. Omar suspended this rule. Omar suspended the rule once and he said, I'm not going to cut the people's hands anymore. Why did he do that? What was the reason that Omar did that? Suspended the rule of the court. Why did he do that? I'm sure they won't do that. Yes? Exactly. There was starvation. There was drought, in fact. So it was a long drought in Medina. There was very little food. And Omar said, until the conditions improve, I'm not going to cut off people's hands when they steal. If they steal food. Because they are forced to steal food. In the time of the Nabi Sallallahu 
وسلم there was no zakah on horses there was zakah on camels zakah on sheep zakah on zakah on things except horses were excluded from zakah when it came to the time of Umar ibn Khattab he said no 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 I will include a tax on horses as well so he increased the taxation by including horses Umar ibn so during the time of the Sahaba, it seems as if somehow they had the allowance of being able to change the law. And from a person, if you hear this from somebody, you don't know why, what the reasons were, then it seems as if you know, how could they do that? How could Osman do that? When the Prophet didn't do it, nor Abu Bakr do it, nor did Omar do it. So why could Osman do it? It's important for us first of all to understand who the Sahaba were. Sahaba not only had knowledge, they also had the, they had the depths of knowledge. Sahaba was, Sahaba not only me and you, they called Sahaba, they were companions. They weren't the friends of the Prophet. They were his acquaintances, they were his companions. Meaning, what is a companion? Like your wife is your companion. What is a companion? Companion is something with you 24 7. So they were the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They understood the law. They were there when the Wahi was revealed. They hallowed every word of the Nabi They understood the depth of the law. So when you hear any of the Sahaba having changed the rule, you must understand. Then what they did was they practiced what is called ijtihad. They practiced what is called ijtihad. Meaning what? Meaning they applied their minds to the law. They looked, we can't do that. Only a mujtahid can do that. A mujtahid is a person of the level of a sahaba. That's a mujtahid. And Imam Shafi was a mujtahid, Abu Hanifa was a mujtahid, Imam Ali was a mujtahid. These were the last which they do, and after that I don't think they any more which they do. The which they is somebody who knows everything about the Quran, everything, most of the ahadith, and is able to apply his mind to this. So the Sahaba had what is called Malakatul Ijtihad. They had the capacity to practice Ijtihad. And what does the word Ijtihad mean? It means a person who has the knowledge, and secondly, who has the intelligence to apply his mind to the knowledge. Because many people have knowledge but no intelligence. Many people have knowledge but no intelligence. Ask and a lot of people with lots of degrees. You ask them anything outside their degree, they stop. They can't have a conversation about anything else except they not that they're not stupid. But a Muchtai is somebody who has knowledge of all the law. Criminal law, civil law. Law of Salah, Law of Zakah, Law of Economics, Law of Commercial, all. Imam Shafi and Muhammad and his people wrote on all the subjects, all these subjects. And when you teach these subjects at the university, they teach you all these subjects. And all these subjects were mastered by the Mujtahid. So if Shafi was a Mujtahid, imagine what Omar ibn Khattab was doing. Imagine what Osman was doing. Not only was he a Mujtahid, he was. The lover of the Prophet gave him two daughters. You know, if you give something two of your daughters, maybe you give somebody one of your daughters, you'll think twice of giving him the second one. <laughs> but both of them passed away when the Prophet said about another brother would be given to Osman. No, father doesn't say that lightly. So Osman would never have gone against so him. The love was too great. So why did he do it? This is important. And this is what we lack today. We lack that kind of knowledge in order to apply our minds to modern situations. Therefore, today they have they have panels of ulama. Not one alim. They have panels of ulama in the Middle East, in the Far East. They have majma, majma, majmaat, many groups of ulama. The biggest majma of fiqh al islami which is based in Jeddah, is composed of the most or the highest learned alim of every Muslim country in the world. And they, 
they sat together and they all new issues are put in front of them and they decided those issues. In that time, one Sahabi, you'd put a masala in front of him and he would make a decision. And all the Sahaba would agree with him. And if they disagreed with him, they would tell him they disagreed with him. And they'll tell him why they disagreed with him. So Uthman what happened in this? Why did he complete the song? He saw, he applied his ishtihad and he saw what did he see? He saw that Prophet's time was gone, Ubaqa's time was gone, Omar's time was gone. So many new people came into Islam. There were so many new Muslims. Hundreds of thousands of new Muslims. They now came from Iran, from Persia, they came from Syria, they came from Egypt, they came from North Africa, they came from Rome, they came from all over the world. Especially for Hajj. Isn't it so? Today also. Where, where do most Muslims gather? At Hajj. So what, what did Osman see? Osman realized that many of these people have very little knowledge of deen. And he realized that if he was going to make two rakas for Dua, and maybe that person only came for Hajj for those few days and would leave again, that person may think, what? Then the whole salah is two rakats. And if somebody asks him at home, say, you only make two rakats for the you say that Osman made two rakats for the Lord. Even for Hajj, you will say, now Osman made two rakats And he made two rakats for the You see the happen? You see what the, the leader or the alim or the person who is in charge has to take into account? He has to take into account the time in which he does. He has to take into account the people these days. Sometimes I don't do that, I just shoot from the leader. But Allah forgive me. Alright, so, so the important point here is that I want to make is that and the Shia would, the Shia of course they make a big thing out of this. They would say, look at Allah, you know, he changed the law, you know. He made uh Tarawih again when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped or Bakr didn't do it, and Osman didn't do it, and come Omar and he stopped again and Omar changed this law and Omar changed that law. They didn't really love the Nabi Sallallahu you know, he was thought he was a man. No, no, no. And they give you all these examples. And if you don't know the reason, you say, And that's why it's important that we learn the asbab, the causes of the change of the law. And that is a continuous process. The real ahkam, the ta'id is zaman. The ulama say that the rulings change as times change. And times and the rulings are adapted to the time. But not me and you can't make those movies. It has to be made either by a panel or by a mujtahid. And as I said, there are no more mujtahids today. Knowledge is too high. Any questions on that? Which they had. Remember last week we said that there are two kinds of people as far as the law is concerned. One is called a mujtahid and another one is called a muqalli. A mujtahid is the one who applies his mind, extracts the law from the Quran and Sunnah, it's called a mujtahid. And a muqalli is a blind follower. So a person who is a blind, what is a blind follower? A blind follower is a follower who takes the pronouncements of an Ali at face value. It's in the Makes taqlid. Taqlid is blind following. So somebody will say, I'm a Hanafi. And therefore I do it like this. You ask him why does he do it like that? He says, I don't know, but I'm a Hanafi. I've been told that Hanafis do it like that. Hanafis put their hands like that. Hanafis keep their hands like that. Hanafis do that. You ask him, but where's the proof? Where's your dalim? He says, I don't know. Did the Prophet do it? I don't know. The Sahaba, I don't know. And most of Muslims today are Muqabits. Most of them. The Shafi is the same. People say, but no, why do you do that? No, I'm a Shafi. I'm a straight Shafi. My father was a Shafi. My father's father was a Shafi. But no, why, why do you do it? People don't even think and ask them as if Shafi said so. 
انت مش عارف يوز بروفيت As I said last week, it's our duty to find out why they said that. So there's the mujtahid and there's the muqallid. And we are muqallid, we are blind followers. Unless we find out the reason that, as I told you now, why did Osman change it? There's a reason, now we know the reason. In other words, you might find yourself in a simpler situation where you also find that maybe you, you have a new Muslim with you on travel and if you're going to make two karakas all the time then he's going to think this is how it's done or if you're going to join the salah all the time you're going to think this is how it's done so you also have all with your children for example child may think well my father you know only make two rakas and if people ask why many you say well I travel with my dad you know he made two rakas but he didn't understand all right yes sir um, so if you go hajj, oh, yeah, so repeat the question for the ladies. So if you go hajj now and, yes. in, and you do four of that, is that wrong with it? A lot wrong with it because you're not Muslim, you're not a Mujtahid. You are a Muqallid of the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of the other hand, I say it only, Mujtahid can apply the law like that. You don't have a world view where you have to see that everybody in the world makes four of us. And fortunately today we don't have to do that because most people know that uh, that you go for Hajj or Umrah or travel, then you they use the salah. So no, it's not normal. If you go for Umrah for Hajj or you travel, you must make two rakats. But I said if you yourself are in another street on your own somewhere else in the desert somewhere, you you could make that kind of decision depending on the people who are with you, depending on the level of sophistication. But no, for Hat, no, that remains like that. That Sunnah remains like that. It seems to be a, 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 a common practice amongst the, uh, the Hanafi. Mm -hmm. that, you know, when they do, um, uh, they do four. Yes. They instead of two, I call four. Yes. With, with, with the world pass, the following thing. Yes. So, 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 is this uh, to do with the. Uh, you know, with the... Uh... All right. Uh, that was the question that was asked. Uh, well, we will come to the answer to that. Uh, you're saying that the, the, the Hanak is like four rakas for the world of us. Even if they don't travel? If, on Arafa. On Arafa. All right. That's very strange. But we'll come to the strangeness of that later on. We'll answer that question. You're saying the Hanak is like four rakas uh, on Arafa. We will come to that. Sure.
Similarly, what? When you feel this feeling, you reduce the sound. When you go, you reduce the sound. Imam Tirmidhi, of course, the other question is, and it's a very short question. Imam Tirmidhi reports also from Anas ibn Malik. He said, Sallayna ma'an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al-Dhuhra bin Madina al-Ba'an wa bin al-Qulayfa al-Asr wa al-Qa'ati. Anas says that we made in Madina four rakats for Dhuhr and when we got to Dhuhr al-Qulayfa, we reduced it Asr to two. In other words, the start of Qasr, when you leave Madina, where does it start? It starts at Dhuhr al-Qulayfa, also called Birad, also called Birad. That is also the place where you, where you, where you do what? Where you, where you enter into a state of Ihram. You don't put on your Ihram, put on your Ihram in You enter into a state, in fact, as I said, it's not called Ihram, it's called clothing of Ihram. Ihram, the word Ihram means? What is the word mean? What is the word ihram mean? The word ihram means niya. What is the word means niya. Why is it called ihram? It comes from the word haram. As you can hear. Ihram and haram come from the same root. It means the niya to impose upon yourself those things which are normally halal to be coming haram. So to have intimacy with your wife is halal. When you enter into a set of haram, you make niya for a haram, you make haram upon yourself intimacy with your wife. You make haram upon yourself cutting your hair. You make haram upon yourself wearing shoes. You make haram upon yourself wearing fear. You make haram upon yourself kissing your wife. You make haram upon yourself using sex. You make haram upon yourself hunting, killing animals. Cutting. So you see, so ihram means it's got nothing to do with the two pieces of cloth that you make. Absolute zero. But of course we, because we don't know the language, we confuse. So when you say ihram, what you mean? It is niya. Niya, making haram. That's what I say. You say in way to al-umrata wa nawaitul hajja wa ahram to be al-lilah. I intend the hajj and I make haram upon me. Those things which Allah is part So, where for us does it begin? So, we are here in Kabul and now we want to make intention for travel. Our uh, Miqat is approximately 82 kilometers from home. Approximately 82 kilometers from home. You can start making Qasas. But the majority of scholars agree that you can start making Qasr Salah once you leave the city limits. Your city limits. So if you live in a city that has limits, Cape Town unfortunately stretches very far. So if you reach the outskirts of Cape Town, maybe if you travel from here, if you reach Somerset West, maybe that's, that's you know, over the mountain. You can start making Qasr Salah. So if the world gets you there, but your intention in the beginning must be to travel more than 82 kilometers. Then you can start making khasas salah, but you need the city limits. Some say it's the airport. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can decide where the city limits are. But your intention must be to travel for more than 82 kilometers. Any questions on that? Coming back. Coming back. Coming back. Coming back from the travel. Once you reach the city limits, again, Qasr stops. So, Sahaba traveled from Damascus to Basra, or to Kufa, one of the two cities. I think it was to Kufa. So they asked the leader, when they saw Kufa, they asked, then we, uh, what happens to our Qasr Salah? So he said, you still make Qasr Salah until you enter the city. So the moment you enter the city, the castle stops. But, let's assume you 
are on your way home. Maybe you went somewhere and you're driving home. All right. So you're driving home. Uh, let's say you get to Worcester. Okay. Uh, or you get to, let's say, the Strand. Sounds to west. And it's time for good. Though summer, time for good. But you decide you're going to drive home. Maybe you're know, feeling well, you do this and the other two, and cry. You decide, well, you're going to come home. Because lots of times go for good. So you're going to drive home a little bit, go home. Nothing wrong. Then Imam Shafi says, that the salah that was followed on you when the waqt came in, that salah is the salah which you make. Which is, so you reach on one of the rakahs you make, two rakahs. Because two rakahs of the world was followed on you when the waqt of the world came in. Similarly, similarly, if you leave your house after door and you did not make door and you reach booster how many rakats you make? Four rakats. Because four rakats was followed upon you at the time that the walk started. Remember this very much. So you know Just two questions. Just, uh, two questions. Just touching on what the Lord said. So I'll travel quite a bit. So if I get to Kalin, you tell me about it, you get to Kalin, yes. I make my Juma Asana. You make Juma Asana? Yeah. It takes me about 90, just under 100 times to get out. Okay. Asar does not in that. Yes. So I still drive home. Yes. And I make Asar four of us. No. Yes. Is that? So your question is, to you are in Kalin, which is about how many kilometers away? 90, not even 100. So, okay. yeah. so you can make Asar. So there's no reason for me to make Asar Asana. Okay. So you make Juma Asana. Yeah. And you drive back home. Yeah. And you get home after us. Before yeah, us. Right. You get home before us. Yeah. So what is the question? So the question is, there's no reason for me, for me to have made us a result of, uh, to go to us a person to the mm -hmm. tomorrow. What, what is the question you ask? Yeah. Would it, could I have made us a when? After, 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 after tomorrow. You don't make after. You either join the salah. Or join the salah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So your question is, can you join Juma or well, Asr? Yeah. Yes. You can join Juma or Asr. You can make two rakas for Juma, and you get up, and you make two rakas for Asr. But you can't do... One, one yeah, I'm four or ten. Listen, 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 listen. You cannot do... How can you join the Salah? There are two ways of joining Salah. Two times. You can make Asr in the time of Dhuwar and Dhuwar in the time of Asr. But for Juma you can't do that. You can't make Juma in the time of Asr. For Asr channel, you can't do that. You only can bring the Asr to Juma. So what you do is when you call it, you can make two rakas for Juma and two rakas for Asr. Second question. When you are traveling, yes. for how long can you actually yes. make the two rakas for the new asa? Inshallah, that's a very important question which you will ask. The question that I will ask is, when you are traveling, for how long can you make qasr salah? For how long can you make qasr and join yeah. the salah? Okay. The answer of uh, Mimantero, uh, Mimantero, uh, What is the problem of Hajj? 
It's a fact. The hukum of all these things are fact. What is the hukum? Question now is what is the hukum? Meaning, what is the ruling, the legal ruling for qasr sana? Is qasr sana? Is non qasr Is reducing the salah from four to two far? Is reducing the salah from four to two sunnah? Salah full, 
you have it's a nice party. You've gone against the party. And therefore, if somebody tells you, brother, you as a Hanafi have to reduce the Salah, you cannot make full, then he has to repeat the Salah and make it two rakas. So if you make the word full, you say, brother, you as a Hanafi, you must make, you must make, you have to reduce the Salah. And he has to repeat. These four rakas are not accepted. It's Ba'atul Badashah. Not accepted. Because if you have to reduce the sun. But we're not going into the time. Because the two goes together. So I have a lot of questions after the kids. The Hanafis and the others also have differences about the length of time. How long can you make Asa sun? That's an important question. For how long? So you leave here, you make intention of the go for the holiday. Remember you can make Qasr Salah, you don't have to go into Bakr to make Qasr Salah. You can go on any trip, whether it's a business trip, whether it's a holiday, whether it's just driving somewhere over. And if you drive more than 82 kilometers of your intention, but you must leave over with the intention of going beyond 82 kilometers. You can't drive 82 kilometers and then decide you're going to travel. You know what I'm saying? You can't drive and look on your speedometer and say, well, we've now gone over 82 kilometers and now we travel. You have to leave your house to some time. Knowing, in other words, you leave your house saying, I know that I'm traveling to Canada. So I'm making intention of traveling. So when I get to Canada, I can make, or on the road, I can make. I can reduce my son and my son. This is the rule. The rule is by Imam Shafi's that you can only, if you travel for more than 82 kilometers, you could only reduce and join the Salah for four days. Excluding the day you leave your house and excluding the day you come home. Meaning, four full days plus two days whatever time. Isn't it? Because you can be leave home after the door, you may leave home after Asa. So that day that you leave your house is not included in the four days. The day that you leave your holiday home is also not included in the four days. Those are two extra, not four days, but the other day. The time is in fact four days. So if you make intention to go for a holiday for five days, you can't make Hasa Salah at all. You have to make full from the day that you arrive. Excluding the day you arrive at your holiday destination and excluding the day you leave your holiday destination. If the day in between is more than four days, you can't make Qasr You have to make Salah full all the time, from beginning to end. So if your day is, if your full days is only four days, excluding the day you leave your house and excluding the day you come back, then you're allowed to reduce the Salah and join the Salah. So when you book your holiday, always book it. So it doesn't go more than four days. Excluding the day that you leave and excluding the day that you come back. You know, one past two, I say, well, you can pass And jump some. Imam Muhammad says, so that is the minimum, is it a number of days? Of course, back, sorry, maximum number of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if it's less than four, of course, you can make Hasan Salah. You only go for one day or for two days. <coughs> Imam Muhammad says that you can only make Qasr. The Imam Muhammad doesn't allow that. You can't join the Salah, but you can reduce it. You must reduce the Salah. You must reduce the Salah on your turn. Abu Hanifa says you can only reduce the Salah if you travel in for less. Than 15 days. Less than 15 days. So if you decide to stay in a place for more than 15 days, no process. Is that clear? Is that clear for the for hundreds? So if I decide to go visit my family in Devon for, for three weeks, where I count the day if it's more than 15, if it's more than 15 days, I'm considered to be a resident to Devon. If it's less than 15 days, I'm considered to be a child. Then I can reduce the salah. Haramis can't join. Although lots of Haramis now become Shafis. 
So they they they've somehow joined both my life together and said, well, 15 days I'm gonna I'm going to uh, to uh, to make castle and jump. So half shafi, half half shafi. So remember, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a Shafi, four days, if you're a Hanafi, if you stay more than 15 days, you can't be the system. Any questions on that? That's a very good question. In other words, if you leave your house, for example, you're traveling from here to uh, wherever in your car. You don't know actually when you're coming back and when you. So you travel from here uh, to Bloemfontein, and you go to Joburg, whatever else, and you travel. But you stay, everywhere you stay, you stay five days, maybe six days, maybe three days. But eventually you know you're going to stay, you're going to be away from your house for more than 15 days. Then as long as you're traveling, and your thoughts going to be more than 15 days, you're allowed to reduce the salah. But if you fly from here to Durban and you only stay in Durban, you don't travel from there, then you must wait for 15 days and you're going to be there less than 15 days, sorry, then you can reduce the salah. Is that correct? Yeah. Do I sound uh, logical still or am I fast asleep? Alright. Any other questions?
the rule for all the Madaik is that you in a, if you're in the masjid for Abu Hanifa or for Shafi, all of them say that if you're in a masjid where the Imam is, whatever he is, you're fine. But, listen, you said that uh, you follow two Madaiks. Yes. But does it mean that I have to follow what the Or I have to do it? Yes. That, that, if I feel that uh, what the Imam Shafi is in terms of knowing me that Imam Shafi is all of them, all of them, they have bad uh, data observations and, and, and learn from the Sahaman. And they learn from the Prophet. If I, I will follow a Shafi or a Shafi and knowing me that that person has That's a very good question. It's a question that, that has uh, been with us, I think, since the time of Nabi Noor, since the time of Nabi Adam, Ali Sallallahu And the question that you ask is, if I follow any madam, it must be the truth, it must be correct. So am I allowed to follow any madam that I want to follow? That is your question. Not any madam. Well, there are four. I mean, obviously four. One of the four. Yeah, one of the four.
The reason that we have the differences with Abu Hanifa al-Shami is because of the application of the mind. Because every person's mind is different. The extent of a person's depth of understanding is different. We will look at one thing, but because you know the subject better than I do. I mean, if I, if I show you this piece of cloth, for example, a person of cloth, I will say, well, this is a big piece of, maybe it's linen, maybe it's, but you will exactly know maybe even where this was made, because that's your job. That's what you grew up with. That is your profession. You know? Same with carpet, same with anything else. So, Abu Hanifa had certain areas in which he was an expert. Shafi was an expert in certain areas. And so were the other one. So, their perspective would be different. But I, as a person who doesn't know the language, hasn't studied the Hadith, hasn't studied the Quran, if I'm a Hanafi, I should stick to my mother. But if I follow an Imam in the Salah, I have to follow the Imam in the Salah. And if I say that chapter, they all agree with that. For example, if you come to the Majid for Fajr, and the Imam is Pumut, you can't go down and make two. You have to follow him, you have to stand, and wait till the Imam is finished. If you don't want to do the Quran with him, you have to wait until he's finished, and then go into it. So you, so you have to follow him. So my suggestion always is, if you know the Hadith, on which, if you're a Hanafi and you know the Hadith on which Imam Shafi bases in particular, you can follow Shafi. Or if you're a Shafi and you know the Dalil, the for example, we are all in Cape Town, we are Shafi we are a Shafi community, isn't it? We, we, we've always been maybe 99% Shafi. I think in the last maybe 20 years, we've, that's been reduced. Because a lot of the Hanafis from the northern have settled in Cape Town. But there are times when every single Shafi in Kintan becomes a Hanif. All of us become Hanifis when we give Fitra. When we give Fitra, we all Hanifis. Because only Abu Hanifa allows you to give Fitra and money. Shafi says you can't give Fitra and money. You can't give 20 rand. So Fitra is 23 rand, 30 rand. You can't give somebody 30 rand. Shafi doesn't allow you to say, no, no. That's not, that's not Fitra by Shafi. Shafi says the Prophet is not going to give money. Prophet gave. Wheat, barley, barley and wheat, not even rice, barley and wheat, you must give 1.5 kilos of barley or 1.5 kilos of wheat, that's what you have to say. Abu Hanifah says, but you know, we have to apply our mind to say Abu That time when people ain't told me that, that was that time, the food that, today, people eat so many different kinds of food, so why don't you give them money, they can buy it themselves. So the, the Shafis will never say they are also Hanafis. <laughs> and the Hanafis sometimes will never say that they are Shafis. In case that will become Hanafis. And, and there are many other instances. I can, I can give you it. I can give you maybe a few instances where the Hanafis become Shafis. For example, lots of Hanafis now join the Salah. Qasr Salah, when they don't share, they join. Lots of Hanafis who regard crayfish as having been Makrut Tahrimi. Makru bothering on haram for eating prawns and crayfish. Today it's become. You see the notion past the notion. You know the lava to eat crayfish? Is that So you see, in the environment in which you live, also fits you. Also fits you. But my, my, my answer is that for an ordinary layman, Yeah, the Hanafi say that fish that doesn't have scales, you can't eat. Uh, like snook, and the Shias, of course, also agree with that. All right, these books are very nice books. They, 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 they come at a very high price if you buy them um, new. They are four dollars. <laughs> three, three and a half dollars. But the Masjid sells it, I think it's ten right? Yeah. They sell it for ten right? So if you want to buy it, it's very good to have in the house. In the house, people can leave it. Shukran, Salaam Alaikum.